blame it on the dog. Okay, we're going to do, um, this talk is focused uh, on things uh, in life. Um, as we go through life, people may have regrets in life as, uh, as time moves on. Usually the older we get, the more regrets we might have. And um, I'm just going to, the title on the talk is Regrets. Uh, most people don't think about regrets until it's uh, too late to do something about the regret you may have. You can look back after and go, oh, I regret that, or once the, the time has passed. Uh, more often than not, it's um, uh, usually when people are uh, you know, nearing the end of life that they may look back on life and have regrets in their life. And um, I'm just drawing from two sources today. Uh, um, Cornwall, uh, Cornell University did a big study on uh, people having regrets um, and uh, they studied a lot of elderly people and I'm uh, coming from another book, a lady called uh, Bronnie Ware. She wrote a book, uh, she was a palliative care nurse and she wrote a book and she nursed a lot of people uh, in palliative care and she wrote a book about all the regrets that people had and she listed them all and what was the most important and least, etc. So it was quite an interesting read. And um, so we're going to be talking about uh, these regrets and uh, two main categories uh, uh, Cornell University found um, ought self-regrets uh, related to yourself and what you, what you did or didn't do, or your own obligations, and the other ones was ideal self-regrets, which was um, perhaps goals or aspirations that you wanted to achieve in life, but but all of a sudden you got old and you realised you never got there and never re never got to those goals and never re received those. So uh, they found two levels of regret uh, there. But I want to tell you up front um, that if you're baptised and spirit-filled, any regrets you may have in this life at all will seem totally insignificant when the Lord raises you to be with him on the day of his return. All regrets will be not worth worrying about because we'll be going to be with the Lord forever. So if you're baptised and spirit-filled, you're way ahead of the regrets game now, I can tell you now. But people go to their deathbeds with some serious regrets uh, never being baptised, never being filled with the Holy Ghost, never knowing that there's a better outcome at the other end of the day. And um, so uh, people do go to their deathbeds like that, which is very sad. And uh, uh, Bronnie Ware wrote a lot of this in her book and she talked about this, how, uh, you know, people died with incredible regrets. Um, so, but if you're baptised and spirit-filled, uh, you've really got past that one, really, in essence, you've got past it. You may have a few regrets here and there, uh, if you die in the Lord, uh, but that will seem insignificant in the plan of God that you've been placed into. So you're in a great place if you're uh, born again. So um, <clears throat> some of the um, main regrets people have, uh, they listed them in priority, but uh, one of those um, was, uh, where have I got that written down here somewhere? <clears throat> uh, one of the main regrets that people had was, um, they're cheating on a partner. That was one of the big ones. And when they got older, cheating on a partner was at the top of the list. And they had this incredible regret that, uh, you know, uh, wondering what might have been, what could have been or whatever, if they had never done that. So uh, that was a big one there. And, um, you know, uh, and uh, we're in the Lord as well. You know, uh, you know, we don't want to go back into the world because to God, that's, we're just cheating on God. If we, God gives us the most gracious, precious gift in the world and you know the bible talks about we're a spouse to christ and those types of things and you know we're sons and daughters we're his and he's a jealous god the bible says and you go back to the world and you ditch all that that's really cheating on god and, and not a good place to be and, and and people will have people that do that will have some serious serious regrets at the, at the lord's return and uh, there's a whole bunch of scriptures for that, which I don't need to go through. So you don't want to end up in that boat. So, uh, and it was the same for just people in the world to have that, uh, to be unfaithful, to have that regret at the end of the day. Um, <clears throat> we should not be surprised that um, uh, many of these regrets people have, the Bible actually has an answer on how to avoid them, to how to avoid regrets later in life. And it gives great advice on how to avoid things when you get older. So we're going to cover some of these points today and, uh, and look at these regrets. Uh, one of the self-regrets um, for a lot of folk was rebelling heavily as a youth, especially as people um, aged and they became parents and grandparents themselves. 
uh, they thought about their own adolescence and regret how they treated their parents. So uh, that was a regret that people had as they grew older and how they perhaps treated their own parents and where they got. But we'll go to Deuteronomy chapter 5 and 16. And the Bible gives us um, some great answers for this one to not suffer this regret as you get later in life, but to uh, do the right thing. Um, in Deuteronomy 5 verse 16, it says, Honour thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee that thy days may be prolonged and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So uh, this was a good thing that God thought, you know, you need to honour your mother and your father. They brought you into the world, looked after you when you couldn't look after yourself for many years and got you on your feet. And uh, the Lord's saying we need to honour that. And if you, and if you, even if you just do that one little verse there, uh, you won't have that regret later in life. Uh, that won't come. So it's a good start there. In Ecclesiastes, uh, uh, chapter 12 and just verse 1 here it just says remember now uh, thy creator in the days of thy youth remembering now means to be mindful and to be thinking about your creator uh, while the evil days come not nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say i have no pleasure in them so um, in the days of your youth just uh, remember thinking about god uh, remembering considering god's advice in your life putting that into action really works well in your youth when you're younger and you put that into action as you grow older you can't you won't look back and have no pleasure in them in your life in fact you won't look back that means you just have regrets you look back if you have no pleasure you have your regrets in what went past and before you so a good way to do that remembering your creator uh, psalm 199 says wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word so uh, listening to the word, taking heed to the word. And uh, one last one in Ecclesiastes 9 and verses 9 to 10. It says, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But uh, know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. In other words, he's just saying here, you know, just uh, know that God's watching and uh, God's watching what we're up to. Young or old, it doesn't matter. God's still watching and he's just saying, well, it's a good idea because uh, in your youth, it talks about it being, you know, uh, uh, youth is vanity and you can do silly things in your youth and uh, you, you may do silly things in your youth or not think, do something before you think. Uh, it doesn't happen so much as you get older. Uh, you perhaps got a bit more wisdom, but uh, it's saying here the Lord's looking, do things and uh, the Lord uh, will bring things into judgment one way or the other. But taking heed to God's word um, in your younger years uh, is of great advantage to avoid that regret when you get old and uh, not have that one. Um, not keeping a secret, Proverbs 25, uh, interesting verse here, just one verse, Proverbs 25 verse 9 <coughs> talks about uh, keeping secrets and uh, people who spilled the beans on something they were asked to keep private often had regrets later in life. Um, it says in debate thy cause, verse 9 of 25, debate thy cause with thy neighbour himself and uh, discover not a secret to another. Lest he that heareth it put thee to shame and thy infamy turn not away. Um, you know, basically saying, if you want to tell your friends about your problems, that's okay, but don't discuss what someone else told you in private. Whoever hears it uh, will lose their respect for you and will never trust you again. Basically, that's what that paraphrasing that verse, you won't be trusted again. So um, people had regrets about that. It's talking about um, something about someone else that somebody told them in confidence. So keeping a secret was an important aspect uh, for these folk you know, when they got older. From these studies. Um, uh, regrets, uh, some of the others were regrets about not being able to see a dying relative uh, one last time to say goodbye and I think that's probably a pretty standard one there. It's not always possible to do that. Um, not taking the opportunity to help someone uh, in need was another popular ought self-regret that the university found out about. Um, they basically said the next time someone asks you for help Think carefully instead of automatically saying no. And um, we'll turn to 1 John. Actually, I've got a, chapter, a, a scripture for that. And we'll go to 1 John.
and verse uh, chapter 3, verse 16. 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. You know, and, uh, you know Christ, he saw our need. Uh, we were dead in sin, and he gave his sinless life for us. He saw us in need, but he, long before we were born, he saw our need, and he gave himself for us. Hereby perceive we uh, the love of God, in verse 16, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whosoever hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed, that's actions, and in truth. So uh, the example was given that Christ died for us, and uh, he laid down his life, and uh, we should do the same for our brethren, to see a need and to be able to respond uh, to it. For people did indeed have regrets that they never did that in life for certain aspects or people that they came across. Proverbs 19 verse 17 tells us, He that hath pity upon the poor uh, lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he repay him again. So um, basically here it's just, it's almost saying, you know, if you're giving money to the poor, you're actually giving money, loaning money to God, and God's not going to, he's no man's debtor, he's going to pay it back kind of thing. So that's kind of the story there with that one. Having pity on the poor, you're really lending unto God, uh, and uh, God will repay him again. Hebrews 6 verse 10 tells us, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labour of love, which ye have showed towards his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. So we see these answers in Scripture, these things we can put into play in our daily walk in the Lord, in our daily lives, and um, not end up where these people ended up with regrets in life. And so the Bible has a way out. Uh, the most common regrets, the Bible's got literally a Scripture for every one of them to avoid when you get old, to have any regret in life at all. Um, uh, not travelling more, not vacationing more was regrets some people have. Couldn't find a scripture, but I'm working on that one myself. Uh, <laughs> I know others are. Richard's got one Greek island left to go and he's seen all 32,000 of them uh, or whatever. So uh, we'll get there eventually. So uh, that was one. Uh, working too much. Um, well, uh, that wasn't a regret. The um, old adage of nobody on their deathbed ever wish they'd spent more time in the office apparently no one ever said it <laughs> no one ever said i wish i'd worked harder and spent more time in the office before they died so um they never got that response from anybody in fact they regretted that they had spent too much time in the office and missed out on life too much um, another common regret uh, that bronnie ware put in her book was people not expressing true feelings uh, she says holding on to feelings of bitterness and resentment um, often manifested itself in physical illnesses. So, uh, and we know that to be true, you know, because they just put themselves in that spot where they didn't want to be. You know, they had they had this, uh, uh, you know, resentment and bitterness and in their heart, and it just makes you sick. It just it's not good for your health at all. So we're going to look for some scriptures. We've got some scriptures on that one. Ephesians, chapter four, verse thirty-one. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamour and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So uh, getting rid of bitterness, bad feelings, it's literally not good for our health. Uh, not good for us at all. It tells us to get rid of those things. Um, other regrets were um, not spending enough time uh, with their parents, uh, uh, especially for those that lived far away from their parents and strained relationships, etc., etc. People had those regrets. Uh, being inattentive to their children, um, not being around enough during their children's younger years was another major regret in life that people have. And, um, and they wish they'd done more activities with their children. And, uh, and um, two thirds said, uh, said that they would do things differently if they had their time again, they would do it differently. So that was a big chunk. You know, two thirds of people said they just do it differently um, with raising their children. But the Bible tells us how to look after our kids. We'll go to Proverbs 22, verse 6. <clears throat> now, Proverbs has great advice on all this stuff, family stuff, which is coming up the family weekend in a couple of weeks for those that can make it. 
it's going to be lots of uh, great information there and uh, on um, uh, being a family and raising children. This, this one's teach you, um, uh, where are we? Train up a child, 22 verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go and when he was old he will not depart from it. And uh, a lot of that training is, uh, you know, just uh, bringing them up in the ways of the Lord and giving them a little bit of scripture here and there, uh, teaching them scripture, bringing them to the meetings, hearing the testimonies. It's all going in the ears if you're hearing, listening to testimonies. It's all going in. It's all sinking in at the end of the day. And, um, you know, train up a child in the way it should go. When he was old, it'll be good for them. Uh, Ephesians 6 verse 4, it says, uh, the fathers not to provoke their children to wrath, but to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, to raise them in the Lord. Uh, teach your children God's word. There's a scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. It says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So this was just Timothy. Apparently he was a, a young fellow when he uh, was in, imported into ministry, uh, as, the, as the word would suggest. But it just says, you know, you've known these scriptures since you were, you were younger, since you were a child. And uh, that was a good thing. It wasn't a bad thing here. He learned some good stuff and he learned things that he needed to know that um, uh, got him through life very well. Um, worrying too much was another regret. Uh, it might be hard not to fret, worry about bills, kids, other life issues, uh, just during the day to day. But uh, worrying too much is a common regret that uh, many older folk had. Uh, many of them deeply regretted worrying about things uh, that never happened or things they had absolutely no control over. So there were two things and uh, they realised, well, I had no control over that or the worry that they had never came to pass, never really happened. So not worth worrying about some of those things. But the Bible also gives us answers about not being anxious and not thinking about those things, not trying to dwell on things that may never come to pass or may never worry us. Um, Matthew 6 verse 34, he says, uh, this is the Lord says, take no thought uh, for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And uh, the Lord wasn't saying you don't have to take any thought at all. It was obviously planning, normal planning and normal everyday life to happen. But with the Lord, that word thought means just being anxious over it all. Not to be anxious over it all, know that God's got things covered. Uh, he's got tomorrow covered. He's got the day after that covered. And uh, if you're in the Lord, even better. Yeah, Philippians uh, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 tells us to be careful or anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Uh, be, be anxious for nothing, but uh, giving your problems. If you are anxious, give them over to the Lord. Give them to God. Let him take care of them. He says, I want your burdens. I want your cares. Cast them upon my shoulders, he says. So you just give all this stuff to the Lord and let him take care of it. Tomorrow's God's got that covered. And uh, one of the last ones I want to cover is people not letting themselves be happy. Um, Bronnie Ware in her book said that many people uh, find out too late in life that happiness is a um, that happiness in life is a choice, and that they deeply regret not allowing themselves to be happy sooner. Uh, most people had not honoured even half of their dreams, and and had to die, knowing that it was due to choices that they had made or not made. That life is a choice. It's your life. Choose consciously. Choose wisely. Choose honestly. Choose happiness. And this was in her book that she stated and realise that people, you know, just missed out on making choices along the way, choices that were good choices. Now, we read a lot of scriptures here, and they're all good choices to um, put into your life if you don't want to have regrets. And But the best one of all is, um, is uh, getting yourself saved and getting yourself on the right side of God. And um, uh, the idea of making a choice um, really hasn't changed in several thousand years. We'll go way back to the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 30 where God says, you've got to choose. You have to choose. Sooner or later, there's got to be a choice made. And God didn't make us puppets. He gave us opportunity to choose for ourselves. He gave us a will. Sadly, many people don't use that will to serve the Lord. They, they just serve themselves and don't want to know about God often. But the choice was given. 
um, what's my margin say, 1451 BC, so quite a while ago, three and a half thousand years. Uh, Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you uh, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest uh, obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to, and to Jacob, to give them. So we see here that, um, you know, the Lord gave them a choice. This was uh, the children of Israel. They got out of Egypt and here they were in the promised land or heading to the promised land. And Moses is saying, look, you have a choice. You can serve the Lord and you can have a great life, uh, a length of days, um, and, and God will take care of the rest. Uh, we read all the scriptures. God takes care of things. And um, they had the choice to choose life and, so that they could live. And their seed. Um, sadly, those ones that he gave the choice to pretty much all passed away in the desert. They never saw the promised land. They didn't take that advice. They didn't they choose not wisely at all. They didn't choose well. The next generation made it through into the promised land. The ones that didn't choose unwisely they just went along with the flow but they found themselves entering the promised land and God showed them right from the very start what he could do he brought down the walls across the Jordan River they're only in there a week or two and the, the walls of Jericho come down God shows his incredible power to his people and then goes well this is how it starts and it can just finish like this too but sadly they uh next gen grew up and then they disobeyed the Lord then the kings came along and judges and all sorts of things we had evil kings we had good kings and uh, when we had an evil king that didn't do what God wanted things went bad they chose badly and when we had a good king that did what God wanted things went good and everything was well and um, so we see this cycle going over and over and over again through our Bibles and um, but there's always a choice and that's the point we're trying to make here to choose wisely to choose God. Now, the three things here that he asked for is love. He wants your love. He wants you to obey his voice, and he wants you to cleave unto him. Um, uh, so choosing God's road to happiness, well, it was the best option for, for mankind. It was always the best option for mankind way back there, three and a half thousand years ago. Um, uh, in the American institution, they've written that you have the right for the pursuit of happiness. But really, are they that happy? <laughs> they seem to be shooting everybody, every of each other nowadays. There's just a lot of stuff going on over there. But, you know, all in all, uh, uh, I don't think people are generally that happy. And um, But they have the pursuit of happiness written into their constitution, but they should be just pursuing the Lord. That word to cleave, it actually means, um, um, means to catch God by pursuit. It actually means to pursue God. That's what it's talking about. So the options are... You know, the pursuit to happiness is the pursuit to God, pursuing God, doing what God wants you to do, doing what God says to do. If you pursue God, you will have your life and you will have length of days. You get two great things that God gives you. Um, so he just wants you to love him first, to obey him. So there's actions to be had and to cleave, to pursue him, to pursue happiness, cleave to God. It also means to follow God and it means to stick to God. That's what cleaving means when you cleave, of course, and you two things become one. So we see this here uh, that it, way back, you know, uh, this was the way to go. Uh, choosing happiness was the way to go. But people on their deathbeds regretted so many choices that they had made that didn't bring them happiness. And uh, they weren't happy uh, on their deathbed and realized they could have done things differently. And um, But right now, while we're in the land of the living, choose the Lord choose that happiness pursue god and you'll be where you need to be at the end of the day proverbs 29 verse 18 says where there is no vision the people perish but but he that keepeth the law happy is he so keeping god's law god's way of doing things that's a happy person um, psalm 146 verse 5 happy is he that hath the god of jacob for his help whose hope is in the lord his god so you're a happy person if you've got God there helping you, being with you every step along the way. And Psalm 128, we might turn there and read this one. This is a good one. 
book of Psalm 128. Psalm 128 and uh, verse 1 and 2. A song of degrees. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord and walketh in his ways. So um, fearing the Lord is just having a good, healthy respect for him and uh, to, to love him, to obey him. It's all a part of uh, fearing the Lord and having respect for God, walking in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labour of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. So if you want to be happy, well, you serve the Lord. You do things God's way, and there will be happiness in your life. If you're happy, you're well, um, uh, content, you'll have contentment in your soul and in your mind. Uh, and, and when you get to the end of life and you look back and you're in the Lord, it won't be, it won't be, there won't be many regrets. There won't be too much to worry about. In fact, there's just a lot of looking forward to the future when you get to the end of life. But sadly, people that don't have that opportunity to know some of this stuff that we're talking about today, they, they die in their deathbeds with so many regrets and very unhappy. And uh, it's very sad that so many people have to go that way when the Bible is just sitting there with the answers for all mankind to grab hold of. You know, um, you'll eat the labour of your hands and happy shalt thou be and it shall be well with thee. Okay, I want to finish on John chapter 21. Our last scripture here. John chapter 21 and verse 18. Just one of us here. This is Jesus speaking to us. And really, he's just Jesus is really just saying here, <clears throat> make the most of your life before you get too old. <laughs> That's really what he's just saying. Make the most of your life. While you're able to make your own choices and do your own thing and you've got full control, do what you can for God. Um, Jesus saying in verse 18 of chapter 21 of John, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth of thy hands and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. So, uh, and that's so true, you know, when you get to that point and um, where someone else is bringing in the food and telling you what to eat, someone else is dressing you, someone else is fixing you up, someone else is doing all of that stuff and you're not in control anymore. And, um, you know, Jesus is just saying here, make the most of it while you can, while you're in the land of living. We don't get long. Life's just a vapour to serve the Lord and um, do what we can now for the Lord um, while you're able, before it's too late before you look back when you're old and you have regrets. And that's what you don't want to have. I'll leave it there. Amen. Hand back to Pastor Tim.